Hey guys, just a quick follow up to the TV shelving project. I wanted to show you what I ended up putting on top. Now remember the big motivation to get this done now is to make room uh, for the new projection set which is going to go over here. I still have a few things to figure out where to put. Especially the radios that are kind of giving me a little bit of a headache right now. I really want to have this kind of prominent. Uh, I'm just not sure where to fit it into with all this other stuff. I'm also not entirely sure exactly how wide or how deep that projection set is that will determine some of this. So after building the shelving unit, I slid it down to the right. Then this space is another area I'm not quite sure about, but for now, it's got my Philco 37690 radio, which uh, I definitely wanted to have a, be in a more prominent place. But it does have doors that swing open, so that's one downside to this. I, I love this radio, I love the design, but you do have to allow some room for the doors. Now they do swing completely around, so if you wanted to, you could have them completely folded back and then slide it in against something but uh and you lose some of the the protection that's why it's so nice inside is that it was closed for many 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 years all right so for the tvs here's what we've got now i originally talked about putting the uh, blonde bendix up here but it didn't quite make the cut uh, honestly it clashes a little bit i love the blonde sets i like something a little bit different but blonde in a sea of mahogany what are you chewing on just doesn't look right <laughs> oh they're just like little kids where were we oh yeah so the bendix may end up here at some point but right now it's not these are the sets i absolutely wanted to get up here as soon as I started thinking about doing this, I wanted to get these out on display because these are some of my absolute favorite sets. Starting with the Silver Tone 8132. Now, I've complained about other sets being heavy recently. I forgot how heavy this set is. This set absolutely takes the crown out of all the tabletop 40s TVs I have. This is the heaviest. I admit I had some trouble getting it up onto here. <laughs> <laughs> but there it is, and there it's going to stay for a while. Uh, next to that, uh, Philco's first tabletop, the 48-1000. Next to that, the uh, fairly recently acquired RCA 8TS30. The very Art Deco looking set. And rounding it out, the Majestic. So I kind of flipped a coin between the Bendic and the Majestic. But as I say, when you have the sea of mahogany, having a blonde set in the mix kind of throws off the, the look a bit. Now I do have some space on top. And since this is sturdy enough, I'll probably put something on top of this. These are both curved, which makes things awkward. And they sit on the end of the cabinet somewhat fragile, so really this is the only thing that I would think about putting something on top of, but it is an option. Down below, as I mentioned, uh, I agonized about the height of this. This is what I settled on, making it just high enough. I could slide this underneath, which is the Stromber Carlson TS-16. I'll be doing a separate video on this very soon. AM, FM radio, 16-inch TV and a 78 rpm automatic changer what more could you want next to that uh this is very much uh likely to change but right now i do have a zenith porthole set and my color roundy i said that because i might be parting with the roundy um, whether I do or not, I don't think it's going to stay there because it works rather well. And I want to put it more in an area where I could see it. So, more like, well, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere else. Um, anyways, th th there we go. Uh, it can definitely hold the weight. Uh, now that I have sets that are very much uh, angular, I can see that some of these 2x4s are more warped than I realize. It's not bending or bowing because of the weight. That's just because it's a warped piece of wood. So, <laughs> uh, at any rate, 
yeah, it's worked out great. I uh, expect I'll be building another one or two and dispensing with all that mess back there. Now that I can actually get back here. Uh, this is test equipment graveyard, basically. And uh, one or two TVs in the mix. Uh, but it's basically stuff I don't really need. It's just taking up space. Um, so this is kind of the graveyard. So all the stuff can basically go, sell it, trade it, put it into storage. Doesn't need to be here. I was hoping to get the uh, Emerson 571 up here, but it's the problem with these early 40s sets, like the, the RCs, they're really wide. So even with eight feet, you get four TVs. <laughs> uh, obviously with newer sets or if I'd gone all with the more boxy sets I could get probably six of them up here without too much trouble but these really early sets are quite wide so uh, like I said it's going to be a short video um, I'm still in the process of weeding through things rearranging things a bit but uh, <laughs> this took some effort. I had to take quite a few breaks. Uh, each one of these sets, or at least these three, we're talking 100 plus pounds. So, not something you just casually toss around, that's for sure. Now, I'd also mention about being able to power these sets up. Of these seven sets, only one of them works. Two, sorry, two of them work. The two that are the, the furthest away, which are the Roundy and the Majestic I restored. None of these have been restored. But I want to get to all of these sooner than later. That's the another reason why I wanted to get them out of storage and where they'd been stashed away so I can get at them and work on them. All right, that's going to be it for now. Let me know what you think about the sets I chose, if you would have done something different.